This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. A very good morning to everyone on this Monday, the 8th of May. Thank you for joining with me this morning. At the risk of sounding like Michael Caine, my name's Phil Wilson, and I'm an authorised lay minister in the parish of St. Peter's, Ipsley. Let's begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompany us in this day's journey. Dawn in our darkness, open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to all of us the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This day, Julian of Norwich is remembered in the Church of England calendar. Born in 1342, she lived an unusual life at St. Julian's Church in Norwich. She was an anchoress. That's someone who never leaves their room adjoining the church. When she was 30 years old, she became seriously ill and was not expected to live. Then on the seventh day, she was healed and had a series of 15 visions in which she was led to contemplate the passion of Christ. She was so famous in her own time, people left money to sustain her. Her greatest contribution to the church was her book, Revelations of Divine Love, which revealed an intelligent, sensitive and down-to-earth woman whilst addressing doubt, fear, and deep theological questions. Let's pray the collect prayer for Mother Julian. Triune God, Father and Mother to us all, who showed your servant Julian revelations of your nurturing and sustaining love, move our hearts like hers to seek you above all things, for in giving us yourself, you gave us all. Amen. The psalm for us this morning is Psalm 145. That's psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, his greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another and tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. 
you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord, that every creature praise his holy name for ever and ever. This is one of seven times of seven psalms of praise which come at the end of the book of Psalms. It's a psalm which reflects God's loving care towards all he has made, human and animal. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, so that should encourage us to pray to him regularly, not just in the joyful times, but also in the difficult times. Heavenly Father, you are full of grace and compassion, patient and kind and great in faithful love to all that you have made. You are good and for all eternity. We bless and praise your holy name. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 16, reading from verse 1. Observe the month of Aviv and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God, because in the month of Aviv he brought you out of Egypt by night. Sacrifice as the Passover to the Lord your God, an animal from your flock, or heard at the place the Lord will choose as a dwelling for his name. Do not eat it with bread made with yeast, but for seven days eat unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, because you left Egypt in haste, so that all the days of your life you may remember the time of your departure from Egypt. Let no yeast be found in your possession in all your land, for seven days. Do not let any of the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day remain until the morning. You must not sacrifice the Passover in any town the Lord your God gives you, except in the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. There you must sacrifice the Passover in the evening when the sun goes down. On the anniversary of your departure from Egypt, roast it and eat it at the place the Lord your God will choose. Then in the morning, return to your tents. For six days, eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day, hold an assembly to the Lord your God and do no work. Count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing corn. Then celebrate the festival of weeks to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You, your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, the Levites in your town, and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows living among you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and follow carefully these decrees. Celebrate the festival of tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns. For seven days celebrate the festival to Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. 
For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands, and your joy will be complete. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town. The Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we have God's instructions to the Israelites as to how to celebrate the three major festivals of thanksgiving, which should be observed by all people rescued from Egypt. Here Moses is speaking to a new generation of Israelites who were only children, if born at all, when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, giving the Ten Commandments, hence the meaning of Deuteronomy being the second law. Moses' heart was heavy because he knew he would not enter the promised land because of his sin at Meribah. You can read that in the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verses 1 to 13. The most important celebration was celebrating the final plague God brought upon the Egyptians when the angel of death passed over the doorposts, daubed with blood of the Israelites. To have no yeast in the house was to remind them that in their haste to leave Egypt, there was no time for the yeast to rise for bread making. There were to be two harvest festivals. The first, possibly the harvesting of barley, which ripens first, to be known as the festival of weeks. Then the wheat harvest, known as the festival of tabernacles. Verse 17 is a reminder to us all that at the times of celebrating the Passover at Easter time and then in the autumn festivals of harvest, we should not come empty-handed but bring gifts in proportion to the blessings God has lavished on us. New Testament reading is from the book of First Peter. That's one Peter reading from the verse, verse one of the first chapter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fail, fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while. You may not have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, 
is of Tamsa, the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. You have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Notice Peter introduces himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ, similar to Paul in his letters. Peter spoke more words to Jesus than the other disciples. He was the one to proclaim Jesus as the Christ, the one who denied knowing Jesus three times, the only one commissioned by Jesus three times to feed his sheep. All of which gives him the authority to preach God's word to the scattered churches across countries to which Christian Jews had fled after the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. In verse 2, these Christians are described as chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. Other translations use the word elect. When we've turned to the Lord, it is as if he votes for us and we have conferred on us a status of being children of God to work for God's kingdom here on earth. Praising God features in all our three readings. Peter praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for giving us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, we are born again when we turn to Christ. In this we greatly rejoice. For now for a little while we may suffer grief in all kinds of trials. How we deal with setbacks of one kind or another depends on our faith to believe God is in control and his purpose is to give good gifts to all those who believe in him. In verses 10 to 12 we are reminded of the prophets and others who tried to predict the coming Messiah. There are various interpretations of the last verse. Even angels long to look into these things. Maybe God gets his angels to look over the work and plans of his church or even look into our lives. Come now to a time of prayer. In the response to the Lord, hear us. It's Lord graciously hear us. So let us pray. Pray, Heavenly Father, for your church throughout the world. Where there is division, bring harmony. Where there is persecution, bring peace and understanding. Where there is a struggle to survive, bring strength and determination. Bless and guide our bishops, John and Martin, together with our clergy, Goth, Ian and Paul, into effective ways of ministry as they care for the diocese and the churches in the parish of Ipsley. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father God, would you keep safe Penny and Juan Carlos, our late missionaries from Peru, as they travel visiting the churches which support them. May their visit to us at Pentecost be a joyful occasion as we hear Juan Carlos preach and then we share lunch with them after the service. And we pray a blessing on the ministry of Bishop Gretchen Rayberg, serving you in the Diocese of Spokane in the United States of America. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Next month on the 5th of June is World Environment Day. So we pray, Father, for the millions of people who live in poverty, powerless to counter the harmful consequences of climate change and other environmental issues affecting them. Please help richer nations to act effectively and urgently to support and bring relief to all in poverty. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for our government facing great problems over the economy, the National Health Service, unsettled striking workers, not to mention revelations of misconduct by some MPs. Give wisdom and strength to our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and all his politicians so that they may seek your ways carefully, finding solutions to improve the lives of those struggling with higher costs of food, energy and food. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, after the bump and circumstance of Saturday's coronation, we thank you for keeping everyone safe. Give strength and wisdom to our new King Charles III in these early days of his reign, so we will know how and when to be effective for our nation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the peace and security forces in our land. Lord, our shield and deliverer, may those working to detect and prevent terrorism and other criminal activities be successful. Grant those in authority the wisdom and integrity to balance the protection of national security with individual freedoms. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we know that the vast majority of police officers serve with honour and integrity and share their dismay how hundreds of their colleagues are facing charges of gross misconduct and other serious accusations of abusing their power. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heal and restore, O oh Lord, all known to us who are in any kind of need at this time, whether in illness in hospital, recovering from operations, receiving ongoing treatment to limit the effects of cancer, or simply lonely at home with no one to pray for them. Grant wisdom and guidance to all medical staff treating them, so that they may know you, Lord, care for them through these doctors and nurses. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, grant your peace and comfort to all who grieve the loss of a loved one at this time. May they turn to you for the strength to carry on with their lives, with hope in their hearts for the future. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gathering all our prayers together, we pray in the spirit the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Finally, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. A blessing as we go out into this new day. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. So thank you for being with me this morning and God willing, we'll meet again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. In the meantime, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.